Hello and welcome to The Green Room by Deloitte. This is a podcast where we ask the tricky questions about the world around us. I'm George Parrott and you're listening to episode 39, where we ask, will the metaverse make work better? Thank you so much for downloading this week's episode of The Green Room by Deloitte. You can find all of our previous episodes on our website or wherever you get your podcasts from. And we're kicking off a new season uh, uh, with my lovely co-host, Ethan. How are you, Ethan? Great. I'm uh, just chilling at my lake house, George. As as Ethan said, we are in a metaverse lake house right now. We're going to learn all about what the metaverse is. I have uh, very limited knowledge of this, so I'm very much looking forward to this. But uh, yes, for our our listeners, uh, it's a lovely, beautiful lakeside view, which is a bit uh, bit sunnier than uh, a wet London today where we are. But uh, we've got guests from uh, San Francisco as well who can uh, can talk talk to us, which we'll introduce shortly. But uh, Ethan, how are you finding it? in the room right now well george i'm sat in a room in our london offices completely alone but it feels like i'm around a table with you and both our guests um and i have to kind of pinch myself that i'm sat here alone we might not be able to pinch each other but uh but either who who do we have in who do we have in the green room with us today <laughs> but we can virtually high five george which we, we can, couldn't yeah. get yeah. enough of yeah. earlier yeah. <laughs> um so to help us with this discussion, we are joined by two very esteemed guests. Uh, we have with us Igarim Shawman, who is General Manager of Product and Engineering for Avatars and Identity at Meta. She spent various years building consumer products and focuses on integrating identity and digital representation into products. Before joining Meta, she specialized in startup investment and co-founded a travel app. Hi, Igarim. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. I'm... Uh... Um, in my lake house over in California. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for us it's the afternoon, but for you it's the morning as we were discussing before. So yes. thank you for joining us this early thank hour. Um, we're also joined by Ed Gregg. He is the chief disruptor at Deloitte Digital in the UK. Ed was a farmer and a butcher before he joined Deloitte. From digital realities to robotics, his team works with new technologies to support our clients and our firm. Hi, Ed. Hey, great to be here as well. Very, very excited to be on the first Metaverse Green Room podcast. The first Metaverse pod and potentially not the last, hopefully. No, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. First of many, I hope. Yeah. Um, so as is podcast tradition or Green Room tradition, uh, we like to start with an icebreaker. Um, so this is going to pop up on my screen. None of us have seen it before. Um, and oh, okay. then, yeah, let's see. let's see what it is. <laughs> okay, so... What food do you eat to improve your mood? Oh, mm. this could be a whole podcast in itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a long one. It's Nutella biscuits, they really improve your mood. Um, <laughs> they, they're really nice. I don't know if anyone's had them. They're, like, they're, they're great. They're like a, yeah, there's like a, a cup of biscuit and then there's Nutella mm. and then there's like another little bit of biscuit on the top. But like mm. rather than a sandwich, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a lid. It's just Ooh. amazing. Yeah, that sounds, well, that sounds, get, get that sounds yeah, good. That sounds good. They really improve your mood. It's hard to beat Nutella, I guess. <laughs> but I have to go. I, my, so my husband is Italian from Italy, and he loves to cook. And so he, on weekends, he makes um, pizza from scratch. Oh, no, and nice. we have like one of those like uni yeah. ovens. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. so, oh, yes, nice. I, I have yeah. to say that's probably I'm, the... I am starving right now. This is painful. Ethan, how about you? How do you improve your mood? <laughs> oh, I think mine is a bit seasonal. So I think it's chocolate based, but I like themed <laughs> chocolate. So I actually oh, yeah. yesterday improved my mood, but then also got a bit sad after as I ate my last... <laughs> <laughs> my last Cadbury's cream egg of a uh, oh. of a twenty box mega pack. So wow. it's, it's lasted this long. I was saying um, I was saying to Igreem earlier that uh, you know weather in in the UK yesterday was surprisingly nice. It was glorious sunshine, nice. uh, and the food which improves my mood. Uh, we did did the first sort of barbecue of the year yesterday. So mm. yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah, a, bit of, yeah, a few burgers, a few sausages, you know, chicken, and you know, I was wearing a shirt very much like this for our listeners. I'm wearing a, a lovely Hawaiian shirt, which I wouldn't normally wear to uh, a work a workplace. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's greatly improved my mood uh, for the for the week yeah. ahead. So that yeah, was good. Yeah, definitely. 
And actually, at that barbecue, I was, I was, my mother was there, and I was talking to her, and I was saying, "Oh, I'm going to the, going into the metaverse tomorrow." And she said, "Oh, what's that?" So, um, so I think actually, maybe, maybe to kick things off, um, I agree, and Ed, perhaps you could maybe introduce yourselves a little bit more um, beyond what we, what you've been describing in your bios about, you know, how did you come to this, this part of your career, and if, in a nutshell, could you explain to Karen Parrott, you know, what is the metaverse? Uh, I don't know who would like to go first. I agree, perhaps. Um, yeah, happy to. So how did I end up um, <clears throat> working on this? I, um, like Ethan said earlier, I've, I've been in Meta for almost eight years now. And most of my time here, I actually spent working on identity and profile in Facebook app. Um, so really thinking about kind of identity and social media and how people represent themselves uh, um, and how they think about kind of um, you know, their representation when they kind of interact with others as well. And so mm -hmm when we started to think about the metaverse and this opportunity came up, it just kind of made a lot of sense like it, to, to come and work on the next generation of, of identity and the evolution mm -hmm. kind of, you know, from social media to, to what we're building now. Um, so that's how I ended up here and, you know, joined the, joined the team last year and uh, it's been, it's been a fun journey since then. Um, but the, but when I think about the metaverse, you know, I, and I tried to explain this, you know, the, the same thing I started to explain to my mom, kind of what I was, <laughs> I'm switching, switching the, the teams and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, <clears throat> the easiest way I've, I found, um, I found it to, uh, to explain is metaverse is, it's, it's not this like, you know, completely new thing. It's really evolution, right? Like not, there's not mm -hmm. like a cut line where like we just turn the switch on and like now we're like in metaverse. Uh, we have internet. And it's evolution of internet. Uh, and what we ha you know, most people have today is kind of these like you know, screens we have in our phones or, or you know, in phones or, mm -hmm. or um, uh, a laptop. And you look at things, right? Like you're looking at the app, you're switching between apps. And metaverse is really the next generation where you can be in the experience, kind of like we are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like we're in yeah, the experience. Yeah. We're not looking at each other. We're actually like here yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so it's just really the evolution of, you know, of what we have on flat screens today to like a more immersive experience where we can be present with each other. Yeah. So is, is, is it right to say it's a 3D internet? Is that, is that, or is that a, a yeah. the right way? Of I think, I think that's right. I think, I think that word evolution is good. I hadn't really thought about this before, but I guess like a similar thing was, was when, you know, was the evolution towards social. So in terms of like the way that people interacted, so like the way people, I mean, email was like instant communication, but like it was instant communication between very specific people. And then, so when we switched to social, suddenly you could have loads of people and it was similar sort of communication. I guess then video was a big, was then another kind of big step forward. And then this is another evolution. So like it's this ability to, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's again taking us closer to that kind of in-person interaction. I, I love this. And if I couldn't be in a meeting in person, this is definitely my preferred mm. format to be in a meeting because I just feel like it's so more re relaxed. It's it's yeah. much it's much more natural than Zoom, which even though it's even though it's a video, for for some it, you know there's so much more to communication than just mm -hmm. like looking at the person, you know, and and like being able to see the detail of the person. So I think yeah, um, yeah that's um, uh, that that I think um, I agree. Yeah. With iGroom's definition is really good. In terms of how I ended up here, um, yeah, as uh, Ethan said, like my background was like farming and butchery, so love a barbecue because that was, <laughs> you know, that was kind of the family business was was uh, was burgers and stuff. Um, so, so definitely also love a barbecue. Um, but yeah, when, when I joined Deloitte back in uh, two thousand and nine and um started working on like new tech and stuff i mean i mean i was working in kind of user experience and then um started to look at kind of prototyping and therefore was looking at new tech and started to do that kind of formally around 2015 but had been doing it quite quite a bit before then and yeah obviously one of the biggest areas of new tech is is kind of digital realities and this sort of immersive stuff and we've been very focused on Kind of four areas um you know immersive learning has been really big immersive collaboration like what we're doing here has has been another big area then sort of like um y you know like customer engagement so so like exciting cool cool engagements like using ar and using vr 
and um, then simulation as well. So kind of digital twins and stuff like that. So that's been the the four areas that, that we've kind of been focused on. But um, I, re I really love the immersive collaboration one because I think, yeah, it's very, very, very exciting. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about this being your, your second favorite form of meeting after in person. Yeah. And, and be before I tried it, I, I didn't realize the extent to which you'd be able to pick up the, those kind of social cues right. and the body language, yeah, yeah, which, yeah, which you just yeah. forget about when after yeah, years yeah, on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes such a difference. If you're talking about, um, you know, creative work or, you know, what, what we call kind of heads together work where we're, yeah. you know, trying to come up with ideas and think about stuff. Those like th those those psychological things. So like having that feeling of comfort and safety and and it being a natural experience. Those are really, really important to doing your kind of best creative work, because if you're not comfortable, um, you know, it won't be good. Like if you try and you know, do this while sitting on a, you know, stool made out of nails, you're not going to, you're not going to come up with good ideas in that, in, in, in that situation. To your point, I think I mean, for me, having tried workrooms for the first time, having tried these experiences, it really, there's so much here that like mm. makes it such like a smooth experience, right? Like the spatial yeah. audio, the, 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 like the body yeah. language, right? Like I say something and I turn around and I look at Ed. Yeah. You, we, yeah. you barely ever will get in the workrooms meeting kind of like, Oh, you! Oh, like you go first. No, you go yeah, first. Yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. right that the the, the, yeah. the the Zoom problem that that often happens in large meetings because there's so much more like so, just social cues and physical yeah. kind of you can look at each other and and yeah. see what's going on. And and we're still early, right? And yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so yeah, much yeah. more still coming, um, but yeah. it's really it just and, makes such a huge difference. And I think that I think that's the, the you touched on that point. Yeah, the possibilities do seem quite endless right now. Um, yeah. And and that's quite perhaps daunting, and it'll be interesting. You know, I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts on why the metaverse has suddenly had a bit of a, uh, a resurgence in the last, you know, six months or so. It's, it's sort of dominating the media. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, ha how how are organisations and businesses experimenting with um, with the metaverse? You know, are are they sort of because you hear stories that you know people are buying up property in the metaverse and <laughs> fashion fashion labels are trying to protect their IP in in the metaverse. And um, yeah, could you perhaps talk to a bit a bit of that, I agree. Yeah, there, I mean, there's so much going on, um, and and it is still early days. But so for one one part of this is just kind of more could, you would say enterprise use case, right? Um, for example, at Meta, like we, I mean, my my whole team obviously has headsets. We have a lot of our meetings in headsets. Yeah. Um, and and it makes a huge difference. I was telling you earlier, I have a team in London, Seattle, New York, and kind of everywhere in between. And actually, like when we have a meeting here, it feels like we're all in the same place. And, mm -hmm. and just it's it's really, really nice to kind of feel mm -hmm. present together and also yeah. opens up opportunity for us to hire from everywhere. Right. Yeah. And, and for people yeah. to live wherever they want instead of, yeah. you know, having to feel like they have to concentrate in these kind of like metropolitan areas. Um, so I think like the opportunity there in terms of just like access to workforce as well as for people to have access to different um, careers is mm -hmm really going to open up kind of the borders literally yeah. um so that's really mm. exciting i think in terms of kind of what are the different businesses also doing beyond enterprise um i mean we're seeing so much and it's still early days but like people are um uh you know thinking about kind of creators right create like we, mm. we have horizon worlds where creators can come and create worlds um you know some are branded some branded some are not uh fashion is going to be is becoming more and more um kind of of getting almost like you can see like in the early days of mainstream right it was brands getting it but also mm. you know fashion designers imagine who are uh, maybe mm -hmm. like less mainstream and this is going to be a great opportunity uh for them artists mm -hmm. etc so uh i i really think we you know we're we're, we're still like in day one of mm. the uh what, what we yeah. could potentially see but <laughs> the last you know year or two have really seen kind of explosion um of so many verticals. I also think the other piece that adds to it is, I mean, obviously the elephant in the room is, is uh, COVID, right? And we'll have yeah, to kind of sure. go remote um, mm -hmm. over the last, you know, three years, two and a half yeah, years. Yeah, and, uh, and and I do think it kind of like pushed, maybe accelerated a mm -hmm. lot of yeah. the um, kind of the thinking and the desire to to be yeah. present, even when yeah, we could, yeah. we literally could not be present. And, and I agree. Are you, are you happy for organizations to? Yeah, you know, be in this experimental phase for a bit, or are you are you you know hoping that they'll settle on on a, a major use case, or how how are you sort of coping with day one at the moment? I mean, I think like it's a, it's 
it's interesting to see where um, how how it's going to evolve. I think uh, mm-hmm. you know there's there's still obviously going to be like a need to 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 be you know to meet in the physical world. So there's going to be yeah. some hi- like there's going to be a hybrid version of this, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so I think like the, it's it's not like something where um, you know. We, one or one way or the other is like the right way or the mm-hmm. one we, you know, um, I, yeah, I personally want to see uh, evolve towards. I think it's, it also would vary by the organization, the size, the location, yeah. the kind of the, what the, the, what actually the business does. Um, and so I think the beauty of this is that it gives you flexibility, right? It just mm-hmm. kind of like got, adds like this incredible uh, tool to your toolbox of how you can collaborate yeah. um, and, and co-create with, yeah. you know, with your teammates and what, what being a teammate means now and how, like all of that is, is expanding yeah. um, with, with this experience. Um, but it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily add any constraints on that. Right. And so I think, yeah. mm-hmm. um, I think we'll see a lot more uh, interesting kind of uh, probably setups and the way the businesses operate in the future across borders mm-hmm. across time yeah. zones um mm-hmm. to your point about like you know uh, uh, uh you know uh continuous space maybe like if we have different time zones like i could i could leave a presentation for you or something yeah. on the mm-hmm. whiteboard right that you can come in in once once this morning in, in yeah, your yeah. time zone come and kind of work on with your team that um and and perhaps like that's you know that becomes like a, a use case. It's, there's just so many interesting ways in which it's going to evolve. Yeah, I also think it's important to add that um, uh, it's not just about like VR. You should be able and you could access it on mobile or on yeah. your yeah. laptop. Yeah, because mm-hmm. realistically speaking, a you know, majority of people you know, are going to use those devices for for quite a while before you know they may, they may get the um, uh, VR headset. Um, and so building for 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 flat screens as well, yeah, these immersive yeah. experiences, yeah, and creating yeah. the continuity between VR and and flat screen um, uh, is going to be also really really important. Something that I mean, we're already, we're already doing, and we're seeing huge value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I think that's right because yeah, it's 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 a it's a, a space in which um, you know people can interact because ultimately this is about people interacting and and right. you know like in the same way that uh you know video call technology yeah like like zoom for example is is was was like a development of um uh, the technology before you could mm. still dial into it with a phone and you were still right. in mm. you were still in a um uh, a video conference but you were just dialing into the video conference yeah. you know with a phone and so that that i think is um is absolutely right it's definitely about much more than the than than the vr and the ar it, it is more about the space and like you know how you get to that space is kind of less important than the than the space itself so i think there's there is going to be some really cool stuff about the spaces themselves um, and the way in which they connect and stuff like that, but but you know, in the same way that you could access the internet from your Nokia thirty three ten, and then from your you know from your smartphone, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, you can yeah. still do it, yeah. it just, and it looks a little bit different the way you do it, but it's still you're right. accessing the same pages. Like that's the that's yeah. that's the key thing. How far do you think it is until it becomes like a, a part of our everyday working lives? Do you think that's something that's that's oh, just it's... around the corner, or just too hard to predict? I mean, it's hard to say, but I, I don't think it's, you know, probably a couple of years ago, you would say like, it's really far out or like really yeah, hard yeah. to tell. I think now yeah. we're kind of starting to see kind of this, um, you know, crossing the chasm, I guess, of, you know, both like the experience is getting better, getting to the critical mass. And also mm-hmm. even in terms of just like VR adoption and, and, and the headsets becoming more and more affordable and available in addition to obviously like the 2D experiences, uh, and one of the big things, you know, for example, for us when we're building Quest is is to build it in a way that's like is accessible price point wise to yeah. you know, more people uh, yeah. because it's important, right? And so I do think I do think it's it's not anymore kind of like a we don't know maybe in a, in a decade type of a thing. It, mm-hmm. I, I think it's 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 much closer. Did you know at Deloitte we buy goods and services from social enterprises which contribute to our 5 million futures program? From Babies with Love sells beautiful gifts for babies and gives the profits to orphaned and abandoned children around the world. Their ethically sourced designs help vulnerable children to grow up in safe, happy places. Do you know someone who is expecting? Why not treat them with a gift? 
from babieswithlove.org. Now, back to our topic of the day. How can the metaverse sort of make it easier for people to connect and be more human and feel more included in, in the workplace? Yeah. Um, it feels like uh, when we when we were designing our avatars, there are you know, a, a plethora of different options from piercings to hearing aids to Hawaiian shirts to, you know, uh, <laughs> to uh, K-pop outfits. <laughs> yeah, 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 interesting hoodie choices. But I think <laughs> and, and, and I'm assuming there's a sort of conscious uh, conscious effort yeah. to think about that. But perhaps could you talk about how... Yeah, how, it's, how I mean, it's so important, right? Because when we talk about sense of presence, which is really the, the most important part of the metaverse, right? Like we're present together with each other. Mm -hmm. In order to be present, um, you know, you, you, you need to have an embodiment of you in the metaverse, which is your avatar. And, and when you look at other people, um, you know, you, you kind of look, see what they look like. It's like, okay, this is like probably what Ed looks like, more or less, in, you know, in more real life. And, um, I think my avatar works out more <laughs> often than I do. <laughs> like, that's an interesting choice. part yeah. actually that yeah, yeah, we yeah. can get to <laughs> but it, it, it yeah. is important Tickets right like to it, a gun show available to, yeah. Yeah, to, <laughs> to give people options um and 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 you know i think we have like quintillion or something like that like a, a different combinations of you know wow. your, yeah. your face wow. shapes and your noses and your hair and eyes etc is for you know billions of people who will be using our products that like they every single person feels like they can actually create an avatar that represents who they are, whatever that may mean for them, right? Mm. And so, and that's really, I think, the exciting and interesting part of, about this is that, you know, in the physical world, we are constrained by our physical look, right? In, in many ways. And and here you could actually, you know, you could also experiment. You could try new things. You could, you know, you you could maybe show up as like someone who yeah. like, works out a little bit more than you, than you do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, I sometimes have a, you know, I, I change my hair color um, yeah. just for fun, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. So there's like small ways to experiment and have fun, but there are also, um, you know, things that, that actually will open up opportunities for people who may not have, uh, who, you know, who may want to experiment with, with this was, um, you know, their, their, you know, who they are, their gender. And, um, and, and I think metaverse and, and the work we're doing avatars really would, um, yeah. would help with that. Um, and the other part of it is also, you know, we, we, we spend a bunch of time working with, um, different associations um, mm -hmm. that work with people with disabilities. Yes, yeah. because that's another really important com component. And you, you notice, you know, we have cochlear implants and uh, we have wheelchairs. But this is just, I mean, we're, we're we're it's still like a small piece of what we really should be um, should have in terms of like uh, a representation. So we're adding more options because so that everyone feels like they could be represented um, in you know mm -hmm. in in what, whatever fashion you know they they want to be in in a metaverse. And so. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a really, really key component because you have to like you have to feel like in your own skin, right? Yeah. For this to to like yeah. feel like you're present with with uh, with yeah. other people. Yeah. Um, so that's a bunch of work we're doing, and then obviously like the clothes, right? I mean, you'll you you'll have very colorful outfits. I actually changed mine <laughs> to something a little bit more <laughs> oh, really? professional for this yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. this uh, for this occasion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but 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 again, like fashion and fashion is a form of self-expression and identity for a lot of people. And uh, yeah. there's so many things we could be doing here as well. So I do think, um, in terms of uh, representation, self-expression, um, yeah, you know, there's there's metaverse is going to unlock um, interesting um, opportunities, fun opportunities, for, and also opportunities for creators. Um, yeah. Again, I think that's in the, in the, uh, just the creator economy and what could happen. Was a was a digital um, which is digital fashion, for example, would be really interesting to watch as well. Because mm -hmm. I think I think one of the things that we talk about with um, the immersive learning is that what um, yeah kind of immersive learning offers is a, a, a safe space to be able to practice something that that might be dangerous or you know might be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so so you know when we initially started, a lot of people were looking at kind of technical training. So things where you were being trained on kind of dangerous equipment or mm. you know electrical engineering or you know like disaster situations so like fire training and stuff like that what we realized quite quickly was that actually it was also a really really good space for practicing kind of softer or what we call human skills as well um because those those human skills you know talking to a bereaved parent um, you know, telling mm -hmm. someone that they 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 have cancer. Um, you know, doing doing a a, a diagnosis. You know, if you're a, um, a a a medical person, 
um, a, a medical professional, like those things are really hard and you do not really want to be doing that for the first time in a high stake situation. Yep. Right. You, you want to be able to practice your lines because you, you, that's going to be a really high pressure, really nervous situation. You know, talking to people about performance reviews and things like that, that's, that's yeah. really hard stuff. And you don't want the first time to be a time with real life stakes. And so that, that, so, that human skills piece, or, you know, human capabilities, soft skills, whatever you want to call them, um, that, that is really important. And I think it's the same thing in terms of expression, because being able to express yourself in this way, you're able to do this kind of in an easy way. So, so without having to, you know, kind of actually change your hair color, which is hard and it can go wrong. I had an, I had an incident with that when I was, when I was about 15, like, so it, like that, 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 that's harder, but you can kind of, you can do a test run. And I mean, you know, we, we talk about being iterative and, and starting small, you know, and, and that this is great because this is a space where you can do that because I, I do strongly believe like in it, in, in kind of a broader sense, I think the metaverse is only really going to deliver on its promise if it's a tool for us to make the real world better like yeah. this this is not you know going to be here in the same way with saying it's not replacing in person meetings it's about providing flexibility and stuff mm -hmm. like this is not here to replace the real world it it's here as a tool that will help us make the real world better because if if it allows someone to express themselves in a way it, it's like a step towards someone feeling then comfortable with expressing themselves in real life that i yeah. think is a beautiful thing have you seen evidence of of people you know being more comfortable with who they are you know, who may who may have you know had had more experience ethan and i've only been in this for the first time today but the you know, for, for uh, more advanced users i suppose of the metaverse have you have you noticed any anecdotal evidence of actually those, those workers you know coming to work in a, in a more positive positive more comfortable frame of self I think like one example, and maybe slightly different from what you're asking, is uh, uh, we've seen quite a bit with, with um, fitness apps, um, mm. folks mm. using kind of uh, 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 FitXR and, and uh, Supernatural to um, to work out, and and it actually gives you this, you know, these apps and, and in VR, um, they help folks feel you know more comfortable to work out in, in the comfort of their home. Um, so you mm -hmm. don't have to go to the gym and, and it's much cheaper, right? You to buy a headset versus like pay the gym fees, mm -hmm. which are quite expensive or buy uh, other uh, workout devices uh, for home. Um, and then kind of th that obviously translates to kind of physical world, physical digital world kind of like a connection and mm -hmm. um and you know your physical well-being improves as as you work out so i think that's a really interesting example yeah one thing i actually um i wanted to kind of touch on from what you were saying you, you know i i actually think it's not about like real life versus virtual i actually think all like we are in real life right like, yeah, we exist yeah, in real yeah. life. Mm -hmm. i think it's yeah. more digital versus physical um yeah. world and and the continuity between the two right so like what we're doing is actually we're expanding kind of what the fit the, the boundaries of the physical yeah. world, right? So the physical yeah. world is not constrained anymore to uh, our like physical location. We could actually, we're expanding kind of the definition to say like, mm -hmm. this is like an extension. And now we're like, in the digital world, we could be together, but we're still in a real life. I mean, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we don't like, we, we exist and we're having this yeah. conversation. And, um, and so I do think it's, a, it's an interesting concept of um, a, a, you know, extension between, between physical and digital. Um, and in a sense, like, your real you, um, you know, in is is still you, both in the you know in the digital and the physical world. And so, kind of yeah. as you're experimenting with maybe who you are, maybe uh, to your point, kind of meeting other. So, for example, if you're experimenting with gender, and maybe you live in a country that that may not be as you know, it may, may not be as as open, right, as supportive, mm -hmm. but you find other people in the metaverse, in groups or communities who are similar, and that kind of like creates that. You, you you make new friends and you create com uh, connections, and yeah. that, those are real, right? I mean, they're, yeah. they're as real as might be in the physical world. So I do think that's a, and, an extension I, of what you know your 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 yeah your, your physical world could be. Well, it's it's been a great conversation. Unfortunately, we are reaching the end. But before you go, what would you what are you most excited about um, when it comes to the future of the metaverse? Um, God, there's so much, right? I, I think in terms of 
where we are in um, metaverse and, and kind of new technology, right? Right now we're at the stage where a lot of kind of what we're seeing is still a replication of, of uh, what exists, but kind of in the more 3D immersive spaces. Um, and it was like, with every technology kind of the next wave is going to be the new experiences that like only possible because of, you know, we're in the metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really excited about kind of seeing what people will come up with, what, what businesses and creators would build. Um, in particular, in terms of the work you know, me and my team are doing on avatars and identity, um, the, the concept of people, you know, creating an avatar that really represents who they are, that they feel like, you know, they feel attached to, right? This is their identity mm -hmm. in the metaverse and creating continuity. I think continuity is going to be so important mm -hmm. in, in, for your identity so that you're not going, you know, it, it's, it's you're kind of going between different places in the metaverse. And by the way, metaverse is not just gonna be like built by Meta or any one company. It's going to be built you know, by, by all the developers and the creators and different companies and policymakers. And so you're in the metaverse. And as you go between different experiences, you don't have to create a new identity every time you go mm. into a different experience, right? You build up this, you know, this mm. identity, this avatar that represents who you are, the things that you own, right? The the, the maybe the 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 clothes that you bought or, or the, th the other things that you may own, and it kind of comes with you everywhere, right? That this continuity is going to be so mm. important mm. for people to be able to have these kind of um, you know, experiences that are, are, are smooth and easy for them mm. to use in the metaverse. And so yeah. that's something that I'm really excited about. And I think it's going to take, you know, yeah. a lot of effort um, uh, across all the stakeholders to, yeah. to build. Uh, but I do think that's going to be a critical yeah. component. There's a lot of things that I, I, I think are exciting about this. I think the thing specifically that I'm looking forward to people getting right is the idea that we could all be so like if this could be a representation of a physical space so that if we were in a uh you know if we were in the office we would be able to meet in like you know like our greenhouse space or something like mm. that and then we'd be able to bring virtual people into the space just put on the headsets and then bring virtual people into the space and they would be there you know, with us um, in that way. You summed that up really well. And I think, you know, it's been a fascinating conversation, Igerim and Ed, I know you haven't had to travel very far today, but thank you so much <laughs> for, uh, for for joining us. But and I think I think my mother, Karen, will, will hopefully be fully equipped uh, to talk about this uh, to her friends as well now. But um, I, I mean, yeah. in, in a nutshell, I think we kind of know where this is going. We always end the podcast asking the big question. Um, and we've touched on, you know, fantastic uh, conversations around technology, uh, democratization and inclusion today. But uh, in a nutshell, could you answer this week's big question, which is, will the metaverse make work better? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think it already is making it better yeah. in many ways um, mm. in terms of collaboration. So, um, yes, an absolute 100 percent. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, absolutely as well. Um, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think. Uh, yeah. And I think that is the key thing. It, it, it is already making it, it. It is already making it better. When I when I have a meeting in here, my day is better. And so, like, you know, if my day is better, that means my work's better. And so, yeah, it's already it's already doing that. What was High, five before, you go? High five before you go. Yeah. 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 High five. Oh, oh. Right, missed it. Look at the elbow. Yeah. Look at the elbow. Ethan. Yeah. High five. We, nice. Is that too far? Yeah. You can still oh, no. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. Air wave. Yeah. 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 You can just wave. Our listeners will totally get that. Well, Ed and Igarim, thank you so much for coming and joining uh, us today in the green room. I think Ethan and I know a lot more about the metaverse than we did. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, no problem. It's been, a real, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Green Room by Deloitte. We'll be back next time with another big question. This podcast is produced by our very own pod squad and hosted by George Parrott, Lizzie Elston and Ethan Worth. Thanks to our creative studio for their technical support and to our friends at Deloitte Digital for taking the green room into the metaverse. Original music by Ali Barrett from our consulting team. Ooh.